This is ground affected. I could have been your dad. And it has come to my attention that this is the 100th time I've given you a really stupid intro to a video. I guess that's not good enough. So welcome to cutting off a piece of your finger and gluing it to your model. In this video, I want to show you something that I made for one of my kids' school teachers. At the end of the school year, we always offer a gift to our kids' teachers, just as a small token of our appreciation for them looking after the little <coughs> for the whole year. Not everybody can afford to go around throwing money at presents, especially around this time of the century where we are going through a little bit of a crisis in the monetary department. So, if you are in a position where you need to gift somebody something, but you don't have the money in your bank, but you have resin on your shelf, then this could be one of the best ways you can maximize the use of the machines and the skills and tools that you have available at the tips of your fingers. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I painted Grogu, who was sculpted by Star Wars Patreon. I will leave a link to their Patreon in the description below. Make sure to go check them out if you like this kind of thing. Also, while you're down there, you might as well click like and you probably want to subscribe. And the reason you do this now is because if you feel like by the end of the video I have not lived up to your standards, it's pretty easy to just take that away. Without any more jibber jabber, let's just get straight into painting Grogu. Turn, turn around, Grogu. A little bit more. Grogu. So this is a little bit of a weird one. I started off with this specific model, giving it a base coat of a silver primer. That is kind of weird, it's not what I usually do, but for this case it definitely helped save a little bit of time rather than painting a black primer and then silver over the top of that. I just sprayed this with a usual spray can and it worked out pretty well. The coverage is great and it holds very nicely onto the model. I then painted a wash from the bottom of that just to stain it and give it a little bit of aging so that it doesn't look brand new like it was made today. Of course, we're painting something from Star Wars, so everything in Star Wars is damaged, dirty, it's full of dust, they live in alien planets where things are really, really dirty all the time, so this is going to actually be an advantage to someone. If you're not very great at painting and you make a little smudge somewhere, it's okay. This is Star Wars. Star Wars is dirty. It's meant to look like that. I took red and I painted it into the little gap around the edge of this small base section. I then took dark silver and I trimmed a lot of the sections on it. This is just to break up the look so that it's not just one flat color. Also, I'm building up a basis for what I'm going to be using later. I want this still to look like it's made of metal. So in order to bring that metallic sheen to it, we're going to come back and dry brush this later. At first, I'm just creating a bit of depth by placing these base colors down and I'm going to spray a little bit of washes just to create depth from the bottom of the piece. I quickly dry brushed the wording that is attached to the base that says the child and then I dry brushed around the entire section of the base. I wanted a lot of the edges to have a silver feel to them and I came in with a brush and reinforce that a little bit later on. This is just to create a metallic look to the whole piece. It looks like the paint has been scraped off. It's not super clean, it's not super crisp, but it looks metallic and it has a lot more detail to it rather than just being one color. I then glued that little logo onto the base one thing I can say about that, please make sure if you do build this model, make sure to check that the bottom of the cot actually fits with that logo in because in my case, I needed to take it off again and cut a little bit back so that it would fit a little bit tidier. I glued a piece of felt to the bottom and this is just so that it stands nicer on a table. I then took a set of parchment type colors. Essentially, this little thing that Grogu sits in is actually a white space pram thing but because i don't want to have it just completely white again there are space things in star wars that are extremely dirty i'm going to start out with a yellowish parchment kind of color it's brownie in a way this is going to be the shadows and i'm going to slowly build up to a much lighter parchment color i'm never actually going to go to white only because white would be way too bright for this nothing in star wars is white even if it appears white it is not white don't paint it white paint it gray or friggin dark white which is, is just gray 
I then used a wash and I painted that into all the little crevices around the little space pram thing. This is because I wanted to create a bit more depth. When I first started putting this color down, I did feel like it was perhaps a little bit too dark, but as it dried up, I felt like it actually fitted in really well and it didn't seem way too dark at all. It does feel like you're doing something wrong sometimes. It's always best to just go with your gut. If you need to, you can always come back in, say this was too dark, you could come back in with those original colors in your airbrush and spray it back over the top just to kind of dull it down a little bit. But in my case, this worked out really, really well. I then used red to paint the blanket that Grogu sits on. I used this Flesh Terrors Red which is a contrast paint and it kind of fills in the gaps and makes slightly darker areas and slightly lighter areas in places where the paint underneath it is lighter than the paint that you're putting over the top. So this will definitely help create a little bit of depth. It's not very accurate but it will definitely help. I also then painted those little things on the side of the space pram just they are red in the images, so I painted that. Then I took a bit of Reichland Flesh Shade, and I shaded that from the bottom or the bases, and also just generally around on the blanket itself, mainly trying to keep that to the lower crevices or spaces where there is a deep recess. I also used this color at the end with the whole space pram stuck together, or at least together in a way, just to try and tie it together with that shade coming from the bottom of the pram thing. I then used that same wash to go and place it into all the vents around the outside of the blanket. This is to create, again, more depth. Now for something that I probably haven't shown before on this channel, and this is gonna be to create a bit of texture. Essentially, I would probably do this with a paint chipping method. However, I needed to make sure that this model was ready to go to the teacher pretty soon. So I couldn't wait for things to dry and paint chipping tends to be something you need to wait for it to cure, especially after you've done the chipping. And in this case, to simulate that chipping, I'm just gonna use sponge. And I break off a couple pieces and I create myself a couple little tools. I make a large one and I make a smaller one. And this is something I'm gonna dip into a dark gray and I'm just gonna kinda dab at the edges and corners of places, essentially where I think the paint would chip off. I also take some of that wash from earlier and I kind of drag it along in scratching motion so that it looks like there are scratches and scuffs all over this thing. I used a bit of a lighter pinkish color. Technically it was a dark skin tone kind of color and I used that to edge highlight some of the padding on the inside of this thing. I then went back to adding the weathering and damaged the bottom section of the space pram. I used Bugman's Glow from Citadel Paints Technically, you could use my base layer for my average skin tone set in place of this one. And what you do is just dry brush this, mainly only over the high spots. I slowly started to lighten that up a little bit with a tiny dab of white. And this was to kind of get much higher edges on some of the folds of the blanket. I then took my knife and I scored the bottom of the model where it needed to glue together. Technically, I could have done this with magnets, but as I was doing this as something that is trying to save money, I didn't want to spend any more money than is necessary on this piece. I used 10 minute epoxy to glue the base to the bottom of the pram. I moved the parts around a little bit just to kind of smoosh up that epoxy and make sure that it's got a good grip on it. Once everything had settled, I gave it a solid clear coat with a matte spray varnish out of a spray can. Unfortunately, that is too bright and shiny for me, so in order to dull some of that down, particularly on the blanket section, I'm going to paint this matte varnish over the top of it because I know that it dries very, very matte. Now to start on Grogu, I'm going to start with a darker brown. This is going to be sort of a mid-tone brown where I'm going to paint this over carefully but not too carefully. I want to still keep some of the black that is in there underneath it just to create a little bit more depth rather than just paint it one solid color. I then went a little bit brighter, a slightly yellower brown, and I sprayed that from the top to create my highlights. I then used a dark brown wash to spray from the bottom just to catch all the overhangs and every section underneath his armpits, around the section where his shirt folds and things like that, just to make sure that I created a bit more depth. Now to dry brush some of those great textures in. After I've dry brushed, I find it looks a little bit chalky. So I'll come back and I will spray a wash over the top of that again, which will soften some of that chalkiness down. I then needed to paint the little cuffs and the section around his neck 
they are a much lighter parchment color and I painted this one color on its own because the paint itself is quite a thin paint I am using airbrush paints here it doesn't cover perfectly but this is good because it gives a little bit of depth where it is darker already in the shadows and a little bit lighter in the highlights from the previous coats for Grogu's skin, I painted with a greeny bluish kind of yellow. I needed to start out with a good base tone that matched his skin tone. And I painted all the skin tones with this. In certain places, I needed to give it two coats, but I made sure that this was one solid coat before moving on to the next step. Whilst I was there, I also painted the dark silver on the weird ball thing that he seems to be carrying. And while everything was drying over on Grogu's body, I decided to start working on the little butterfly that's on his finger. I painted a blue over the top of everything. I used a much lighter blue to give it a highlight on the tips of the wings. And then I took black and I went back in and I painted the edges very carefully. I also painted some sort of shapes, just kind of sneaking over the edges, just to create a little bit more depth to the look of the wings. I also used a white mixed into the blue just to capture some of the tips of the cells of the wings themselves. This just creates a little bit more highlight and makes it look a little bit more brighter and bolder. Now for Grogu skin, I'm not gonna lie, I had absolutely no idea how I was gonna do this. So I started out with a bluish green wash and I just kind of painted that all over it. I realized this was a really bad mistake. I absolutely despise painting with a solid base coat, then using a wash and then dry brushing over the top. It always looks terrible. So I do come back and fix this and I will show you how I fix this later. For now, I started to paint the colors in his ears. I used Bugman's Glow again and I just gave a good solid base coat to the inside of the ears. I didn't mask this off because I want some of that overspray to create softer edges and just help it look a little bit more natural. I did put a tiny little bit of brighter pink just to the tips of it and then this is where I needed to start fixing what that terrible wash had done. And I came back with the same green base coat and I just airbrushed that back over the top of everything and I kind of just try to leave some of it in the shadows but not too much because I went back with a second step and I actually just airbrushed this from the bottom. Now technically, if I didn't have an airbrush, I would have done this differently, perhaps a wet blend between the two colors, or even used slightly different colors to create this effect. I really do not like how washes sit on the surface of any model. They just never sit well, and it always means you have to do so much work just to try and make it look smooth and not like absolute poo-poo. I painted the little fingertips. I think they're a really dark brown, and then I took my epoxy again, and I mixed it up to glue on Grogu to the little space pram thing. Yes, there is a lot of gluing going on in this build. It's not normal to do this, but in this case, I'm not sure that this is going to be a model that is going to be shipped or moved around or anything fancy. It's probably going to sit on this dude's shelf and just stay there for a while. As you can see in this little section here, to keep that little butterfly in place while I was waiting for glue to dry, I just used a bit of blue tack and I just kind of pressed it into place. For his eyes, I painted them a solid black, making sure to shape them perfectly. And once I had made sure the shapes were perfect, I then added a tiny little highlight of pink just on the bottom lower lid. After that, I added a tiny white highlight, one large spot and one tiny spot, just into the top right corner of his eyes. I then added a gloss clear coat over the top of that. And once that had fully dried, I stuck his head on and I called the job done.
Hopefully you learned something in this video that may help with your own printing or painting in the future. And of course, we are at the time of the video where I need to say a special thank you to those that support my channel, and that is my Patreons. And this last week, we got a couple new Patreons who I would like to thank personally for joining up and helping to keep these lights blind in marbles. Daniel Rousseau, Dark Ninja, Justin M. Thank you, my dudes. It is because of you guys that the retinas and marbles will probably be burned forever and ever. Now, of course, that's not the only way you can support the channel. If you would like to support me and make sure that my videos get seen by many more people and help facilitate the total takeover of YouTube, my ground affected. Then perhaps you want to consider leaving some words in the little box at the bottom of this video. It's a space where YouTube allows you to leave your words and express your opinions. In order to support even further, you can click on the next video that is suggested at the end of this one. And if there was anything in this video you didn't like, that is not my fault. I cannot help that. And if you don't like it, then just f off. Now I've got to let my kid get this to the teacher. Please don't break this thing, kid.